In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make a mock-up out of virtually any photo. Hi guys, Rob Baldwin here, IMX Productions. If you're finding me for the first time, I do Photoshop tutorials every week, twice a week. So subscribe below, hit that bell, and you'll be notified of all the new stuff we got coming, okay? Let's jump right in. Okay, so we're talking mock-ups. So, we've got here a photo with some business cards. We've got an iPad, we can throw in our screenshot, and we have a mug. Okay, so just throw your image in there, and I'm going to show you how we'll go step by step. So first thing we're going to do, okay, you need a um, design here. So we're going to grab a business card design, and we're going to paste that in there. Okay, I'm just going to transform it, command and control T, make it a little bigger. Now, whenever I make uh, templates like this, mock-up templates, the first thing we want to do is convert that to a smart object. Okay, so I'm just going to change the name here, biz card template. We're going to right click on that layer and then convert to smart object. Now what this does, okay, a smart object is essentially an embedded Photoshop file within a Photoshop file. So you create a smart object, you can do all sorts of edits to it, add some filters, add some adjustments, double click on that smart object, it'll load up a brand new embedded Photoshop object so your original is still intact, okay? So very powerful tool. All right, back to it. So we're gonna duplicate that smart object and we're gonna work off the duplicate here, just so we have an original to work off. All right, we're gonna hit Command and Control T, transform, get it in line, we're gonna right click and go to distort. Now what distort allows me to do is take those points and move them exactly to where the original business card is placed. We're just gonna to go to the four corners and we're gonna move that guy along. Perfect. Double click to get out of transform. Zoom back out. Now it's a little, it's a little sharp still. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a, just a ever so slightly add a blur. So add a Gaussian blur, maybe like under one, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, something like that. Hit OK. And so we just add that little blur in there to make it look like it was really taken in the photograph. Okay. Let's do the second one now. Now obviously, if you were adding in uh, the top of a business, the two sides of a business card you would want to repeat this process, add in the second design for the other side of the business card, create, turn that into a smart object, and then do the second card from here. We're just going to use the same card. So duplicate your business card template. We're going to transform it, get up in the same process before, hit the transform, right click, get to distort, and then move those points along the line and match it up. it. It's close to we can. Now this one here, as you can see, it was kind of blurred out in the background. So we're going to need to add a, a Gaussian blur again. So go to filter blur, Gaussian blur. And we're going to up that one, maybe three, maybe 1.8, somewhere along. I mean, use your judgment, get there, hit OK. And you've got a nice blur. So already our photo is looking really good. Now there's a bit of a blue glow from the original image that I'm not liking. So what we can do is come down here to add an adjustment layer. Hue and saturation. Okay, let's move it up above everything. Okay, and just select the blues and desaturate. Oh, that didn't do much. So the cyan, desaturate. There you go. Okay, and we desaturate all the blue and cyan in there, so that just it removes that rough blue edge. We're looking good. Excellent. Now I'm going to show you why it's so cool to have a smart object. So you're going to double click on the smart object, open it up, paste a new business card. Hit save, close the smart object, and bang, just like that, the original image is automatically updated with your new business card, okay? Didn't have to do anything, it just gets updated. That's what's great about smart objects. You save that template and you can reuse it again and again and again. First mock-up, done. Let's move on. We got a screenshot here. Let's make an iPad. We're gonna paste that on, same as before. We're gonna right click convert to smart object. Okay, we can call this screenshot. Now what we want to do is exactly, we're going to duplicate the layer. Now same as before, we're going to hit Command or Control T for transform, right click to distort, and we're just going to move it to the four corners, just as we did before. Okay. Now the last point here, because it's being covered by a hand, you want it to approximate, kind of go along the line down here and just approximate where, there we go. That should be perfect. 
Okay, double click to get out of there. Boom, there you go. Now we're gonna hide that layer for a second, come back to the hand here, grab your magnetic lasso tool. I'm gonna fast forward here, you guys know how to select. We're just gonna select the hand, go nice and fast. Once you've selected, grab the lasso tool and just fix it up, fix the edges, perfect. Now, what we wanna do is on our screenshot layer is hit the mask tool and then we're gonna hit Command and Control I to invert the selection. So it removes the hand from the selection. Looks pretty awesome already. Okay, but we can get even better. Now, quick thing here, um, see how it's white on my screen? It's a little kind of yellow, orangish on there. That's because of the lighting in the original photo. So what we can do is on our screenshot layers, add a few adjustment layers. I'm gonna go quickly by this because this is not a tutorial on uh, color correction, but basically go up to your image adjustments, use uh, color balance, use curves, use hue and saturation, whatever you got, and you wanna basically, um, you can tweak those images to where they look good, okay? And it, you know, it, it kind of matches the lighting of the screen. We're gonna go into our uh, smart object and just hide our image for now. So just, just put a white layer in there. Just because what we wanna do now is add a little bit of shading behind the hand because it looks a little, little rough. So load that selection and we're gonna fill it black. So load our selection that we, that we use to mask out and we're gonna fill it black. We're gonna add a Gaussian blur we're gonna blur that hand a little bit. Hit OK. Looking good. We're gonna put it above everything else. Maybe move it slightly over, just like that. So we're gonna load the selection and then we're going to hit a mask. Okay, now it's looking good as you can see the shading on the hand, but unfortunately it kind of goes around everywhere. So what we wanna do then is take the whole layer, drop that into a, a folder and add a mask to the folder below the selection of our screenshot and then add that as a mask. So that shading is only gonna appear on the screen. And now it's looking pretty awesome. Okay, we can lower the opacity a little bit. And all right, let's go and load our screen back. So go back into our smart object, hide that white layer, hit save, and boom, there is our screen. We can easily add a new screen because we've created a smart object I'm showing you here, we've got our menu screen from the iPad. Okay, all right, so business card down, we did a quick mock-up, iPad down, quick mock-up, let's move on to the mug. All right, last one we're gonna do is a mug. Now, if you look at our image here, we're working with a blank canvas. Now, this doesn't really apply to the previous ones we did, so the, to the business card and the iPad, but if you're working with a mug or t-shirt, you, you want a blank canvas meaning that there's no design already on the t-shirt so that you can place your design. Otherwise, it's just not gonna work. Now, so working with a blank canvas, a blank shirt, blank mug works a lot better. If the photo you wanna use already has a design on there, then you'll have to remove it, okay? If you click on the link right here, I have a video that shows you how to remove a graphic from a mug and a t-shirt, so click that link and you can check that out. But let's jump right in. Okay, so we've got this grid. If you click the link below, I'll lead you to my website where you can freely download this grid to use. We're gonna paste that on there and we're gonna just scale it up. Command or control T for transform. Scale it up to the size of the mug. And just as we did before, we're gonna create a smart object. Right click, convert to smart object. Rename that mug design and we may get going. First thing we're gonna do is right click and warp. Okay, so command control T to get into transform, right click to warp. And what we wanna do is match the curvature of the mug. So just move the grid down. Okay, and the reason we're using this grid is so, cause we wanna to try to match every single line. So as you see, we're just tweaking those points um, so that it matches the curvature of the mug. So as you can see, every line follows the curvature. So you wouldn't want it to be like this, kind of skewed off to one side, that's gonna screw up the design. So look at every single line, make sure they all kind of match. When you're happy with it, we're gonna right click, place, and there's our smart object curved to the mug. So we're gonna double click on there. We're gonna hide that red grid because we don't need that anymore. Save, close the smart object. And now we got nothing on the mug, but we got this fantastic smart object. So click that again. We're gonna paste our logo in there and we're gonna scale it up, hit save, close the smart object, and there it is. It's a little low, double click again, move it up. So what's great about the smart objects is you make, make these little adjustments just by double clicking, that's eh, a little bit too high now. Bring it back down, 
Save, close, and there it is, okay? So it's looking great. It's already look, it's curved a little bit. It's, it looks like it's on the mug. However, it's a little, it's a little dull because it's just a plain color. It doesn't have the shading and all the kind of detailing on the mug. We can have, we have a quick fix for that. So what we're gonna do with the mug layer selected, we're gonna have a nice big selection across there with just the rectangular selection tool. Uh, hit the, get the lasso and just, you know, add to the top, remove the, uh, remove from the top, add to the bottom a little bit. We're gonna copy paste from the mug layer. We're gonna place it on top. So now it looks like we've just deleted our design. But what we're gonna do is come up to image adjustment and desaturate. We wanna remove all color from that. We then wanna go into a curves. So back up to image adjustment curves. And then we just wanna add some contrast. Okay, so bring in that point. Curve that in and just really get a, a, a really high contrast going. Not fully high, not like black and white, but you know, good contrast. What we're gonna do then is we're gonna switch that blending mode to multiply. Perfect. Now it's, we just wanted to apply to the design. So hit our, uh, command control on the mug design layer to load, uh, load it up as a selection. And then we're just gonna apply a mask to that. So hit the mask button and boom. Look at that, so our shading is kind of going through the design, so it really looks like that uh, logo is printed on the mug. Now it's a little strong, making it kind of dark, so we're just gonna lower the opacity on there. And I'm really happy with that those results. And look at that, looks great. So what we can do is easily double click on that uh, mug design smart object, paste in a new uh, logo, Hit save. Now here's what's going on here is our shading layer is now applied to the wrong logo. So if I click on that uh, layer mask, look, it's to our old logo. Easy enough, all we gotta do is right click on the layer, layer mask, delete layer mask, and then re-click, option click, or sorry, command and control click on the mug design, add a new layer mask, and boom, there we are, it's reapplied. So one extra step on this one, when you're using it as a smart object, you just gotta make sure that you reapply that mask to the new design. Okay, now if you, now we've got this, the same technique works great on t-shirts. If you wanna see that, you click up to the link right here. I've created a, uh, a video a while back that shows you exactly how to create a mock-up on a t-shirt using the very same technique. So check that out. Okay, and uh, there you have it. Um, so it's really simple, few techniques to create mock-ups out of virtually any image, get an image, uh, these work for photographs, these work for posters, these work for um, really anything that you want to put your logo in and make it look like it's really embedded. All right, click on the link below, guys. You can go to my website. There's a link where you can download all these images. They're already made with the smart objects, so you can download them there, save you a lot of trouble. I've already done the work, so go ahead and use that. I've also got some good resources for places where you can find all sorts of royalty-free uh, images that you can use for mock-ups, okay? that they're free to use, um, they're free, which is awesome, and lots of more great resources, okay? So don't forget to check that out. While you're here, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, leave a comment if you like this tutorial and if you want to see more like it, let me know, all right? And um, check out our, we got some awesome playlists, guys. Check on the side, we got some great playlists for different videos and stuff like that. And oh my God, I'm rambling. I don't know why, I'm just gonna drink this and we will see you next time. Cheers.